All right, four of them now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you sitting in San Antonio, you feel like Benjamin Button. How does it? How did it feel tonight? Like just over. <laughs> uh, I'm glad he threw it, man. That's the trust. It's the trust of our team. You know. Uh, some of my teammates were laughing at me a few weeks ago when I told them to throw me a lot, but <laughs> guess who's laughing now? <laughs> no, it feels good though, man. It's good stuff. Kyrie, I asked this to uh, Daniel and Derek, but what do you think the role of points in the paint can uh, do for your team moving forward heading into the playoffs? Uh, I think it's, it's vital for us to continue to attack the paint, um, test teams at the rim. Um, it's the most efficient shot in basketball. Uh, as close as you can get, 15 feet below, and uh, just want to continue to have that mentality to attack other teams, and uh, if they're not going to stop us, uh, then keep going. So I, I think it can help us tremendously as we get ready for playoffs. Describe what you guys got out of the gap tonight. I know we had seven dunks in the second half. Yeah, no, he was being himself and uh, being a presence, um, kind of on that backside when uh, Kessler was stepping up and trying to block a lot of shots, so he got rewarded. Uh, far penetration, uh, going down the lane and uh, just throwing it up there to him. Um, you know, it's a, it's a true luxury that I don't take for granted having a big like that and also D live and have lob threats like that where anytime uh, you get stagnant in the paint, you can just throw it around the rim to go get it. How important is this a five game road trip coming up considering what's at stake? I mean, every game is important, man. It's, it's been that way for the last few weeks, so nothing's really changed on that end. <clears throat> Kyrie, now that you've been here for over a year, I was curious, how, what have you thought of the city of Dallas as a whole and how its people have embraced you so far? Uh, I mean, I think it's, it's a little bit deeper than just being embraced by the Dallas community. Um, you know, it's, for me, it's just getting adjusted here and getting established um, as one of the community leaders um, while also, um, you know, not trying to do too much. Uh, you know, I have my own beliefs and views and I think being here in Dallas, I've been accepted, um, you know, way beyond just my talent on the court. Uh, I think it's for what I represent uh, in the broader world and how I try to make impact and try to help a lot of different walks of life and stand on things that a lot of people wouldn't stand on. Uh, so I think that's the genuine connection I have here. And I think the fans relish in that, just being able to uh, sometimes get to touch me when I'm going out there uh, just to warm up or, um, you know, during my shoe launch or, or just different things that we do within the Mavericks, uh, you know, philanthropic arm too. I think we do a good job of just making sure that uh, the community feels us. They know that we're here and, um, you know, they also know what we're doing off the court. So I try to have a balance of all of those things. And uh, when I see people in public, I make sure that they know that I'm a human being first and please don't approach me with all the, the you know, the extra fandom and stuff like that because that could make me feel uncomfortable if I'm just trying to pump gas. <laughs> you <know>. So, <laughs> you guys know exactly what I'm saying. Just, uh, I, I don't mind the fandom. It's just sometimes I just want to be treated like a regular human being. I don't say sometimes I want to be treated like a human being. And just how are you? How you doing? And a handshake and a picture goes a long way. I try to remember everybody's names. I introduce myself, and the little things like that make a lasting impact. So that's what I try to do here. Describe, what, you, what, describe what happened on the play when Luca dove at midcourt and threw it over his shoulders to you, and you lobbed it up. It's a great play, man. Great play. Uh, that's when you know we're rolling, we're feeling good. Uh, when we do um, kind of those selfless plays on the fly and, and we're trying to create some momentum for ourselves. Uh, you know, tonight we had you know a few minutes where we threw the ball around and they got some open shots and they were feeling good about themselves. But and then you can see that we uh, turned it back up a little bit more, got some defensive stops, and when our you know one of our star players is on the floor, then everybody's got to get on the floor, and that's just what it is. That's the example that we set and we follow, and um, it, I think it just sets the tone for the rest of the team on what we have to do in order to win ball games. So if he's on the floor, we all got to get on the floor. Um, I know I ask you this all the time about being a leader, but how does it feel to be able to translate that onto the court like you, you guys did tonight? You know, you know it feels great, uh, and it's something that we don't take for granted because it's, it's taking time to build, and we've had to be patient. We, we've had to... Uh, build through adversity and, and also some of our failures and, and I think that's been the beautiful aspect of it is just through our stuff our struggles uh, We've been able to come out on the other side and uh, see some some glimmer of light and uh, Turn it into wins, uh, you know we, we were sitting here what two weeks ago and we had lost four out of our last five and you know We were just going back and forth within the locker room on, on how we can get on the same page and get aligned and stay aligned And build that consistency and I feel like we're figuring that out still but um we're putting game to game, quarter to quarter together, and it's turned out for a good.
good sight, man, for the fans, for us, and you can tell when the excitement is in the in the arena, whether we're on the road, and especially at the AAC, man. It's, it's since that game winner, man, I could feel the it's pulsing in here. You know, it feels like a special year. So that's what gave you guys 18, Johnston. I mean, hey, man, the momentum, the <laughs> momentum, man, the momentum can carry you a long way. So. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Pretty much it, though. He had eight ducks, no, seven ducks in the second half. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you do that enough. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I lost count around like four. <laughs> you had your first career 25 five game. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Uh, yes, they told me after the game, but I didn't know during. <laughs> That's, uh, but no, I mean, you know, I'm blessed to be in this position to be able to just make those plays and just come out and just have a good game. So. Doing pretty good. <laughs> well, what's kind of the vibe when it's dunk after dunk after dunk, and you know, you're seeing different guys have highlight type of finishes? I mean, it's just contagious. It brings energy into the building. You get the crowd into it. And at the end of the day, it just kind of like feeds into the offensive side, and then we get stops on the other end too. So that just pretty much puts more fuel to the fire. So we just come out and we just kind of keep doing the same thing that we, you know, do over and over again, and we just can't get bored with it. You know, having fun with the game, that's the main thing. Daniel, I asked Derek this, but uh, points in the paint. You guys really did a great job with that tonight. I feel mm -hmm. like you set the tone for that. Mm -hmm. How can that impact you guys moving forward into the playoffs in such a three-point heavy shooting lead? Um, and all honestly, just kind of like keep doing what we're doing at the end of the day. There's just a lot of teams that really, I would say, focus on like paint points for sure. There's a lot of teams that focus on defense in the paint too. So it's just like we have to know our personnel and we just kind of have to really just stick to our game plan whenever we go against the teams that are bad at paint defense and going against the teams that are good at paint defense. So at the end of the day, you know, we just have to, I would say, pay attention to details when it comes to just like those teams and the differences on just like what we get thrown, what gets thrown at us defensively on a night to night basis. Daniel, I know you've only been here for over a month, but you and Derek Lively, y'all have both came off the bench, y'all have both started. What does your relationship look like with D-Live on and off the court, and what has it been like working with him every day? Oh, on and off the court, I mean, it's, it's just like I got a, a, you know, a little brother that's taller than me, and all that stuff. He's just, his energy coming towards the game, his mentality, his maturity is like, for sure, like the sky's the limit for him. And I see it on a day-to-day -day basis. He really just locked in with just like how he wants to progress in this league, and he just stays, you know, positive at the end of the day so you know I kind of take notes from what he's doing for sure with a team that you know he got drafted to he's just taking it one day at a time I see okay um it was 18 total dunks mm -hmm. as a person that had most of them <laughs> how do you how do you assess not only the core vision of your teammates but the chemistry between them I mean, it's great because, you know, the chemistry is more built off the court, I would say. You know, and we've getting, gotten to a point to where it's, you know, more and more time that we've spent together and we've figured out just ways to get the things that we want on the floor on a night-to-night -night basis. So it's just that more just like that repetition of us working together. And just like I said, I always piggyback off this having fun with the game. And once we have fun with the game, it's just like it's contagious. It goes around the team. Everybody's happy. Everybody's positive. You know, there may be some frustration here and there, but we get through that as a team for sure. You don't play another game on that Monday. How do you take advantage of all this all the time? Oh, man. Um, for sure, get rest, take care of the body, and then you know, just really just of course we're gonna, I would say, fix a lot of stuff that maybe we're kind of black in tonight, defensively, offensively, whatever. But for sure, just getting rest, you know, taking care of our body, taking care of our mental, and just getting ready for the next one, and not just getting too, I would say, comfortable with having days in between. And reach out to any of your Wizards teammates and thank them for the gift they gave tonight? Uh, <laughs> uh, probably not, you know, uh, but for sure I tip my hat to those guys because, I mean, they play hard at the end of the day. You know, I'm pretty sure that was a rough game that they had to play tonight against uh, Sacramento, so I tip my hat to them. Daniel, this team is 9-1 and one with you in the starting lineup. How has your connection grown with guys like Luca and Kyrie since you arrived? I mean, it's good because, you know, just when my first maybe like week or two here, you know, I just pick their brain and just kind of like figure out the things that I need to do just when I, whenever I'm sharing the floor with those guys at the end of the day and just like all the other guys that are on the floor with them too, just where I need to be, my position, how I'm setting screens, what are the tendencies of both of them, like, you know, Luca, he likes screens being set, kind of likes to play off the ball a lot. So it's just, you know, knowing those things really helped me be able to 
kind of figure out ways to just kind of like elevate our offense on the floor when I'm sharing the floor with them. Daniel, you touched on d kind of being your little brother a little bit. Off the top of your head, do you remember anything that he's came for you for advice or asked for tips on? Oh, like, literally the first thing he told me was just, like, the stuff with Luca. in all honesty. He was just like, yeah, it's going to be a lot of late passes. It's going to be a lot of lobs. Just make sure you set the screen and roll. And that was pretty much it. I was like, yeah, I pretty much know everything that you pretty much know everything that you said because I played against him most of the time. And I was in a position to where it's like I got to be in a position to make sure he doesn't come off, go crazy on the screens, and then throw lobs behind. Me too. So, you know, he told me some stuff that I already knew, but at the end of the day, I took it and I was like, that's that's great because a guy his age, knowing just to be able to come out and just kind of, you know, give tips to guys that are new to the team, something that shows a lot of maturity in a young guy like him. As mentioned, you had most of the dunks tonight, but Kyrie Irving had a pretty nice dunk himself. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of give a reaction to that incredible alley hoop? Uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think he had it in him. You know, he was like, it was a hot <laughs> hog. <laughs> I, I was like, oh snap! You know, I thought he was going to give him a two hand. He gave us a one hand. That's, that's, that's. It was dope though, because just you know, seeing how it just played out, I was like, yeah, we're going to get something crazy out of these two, and they gave us something crazy for sure. <laughs> Derek, the dunks were obviously uh, going pretty crazy tonight. Uh, what role do you think just dominating in the paint can play heading into the playoffs moving forward? Uh, I mean, a big role. As much as we get in the paint and we finish in the paint, they got to lead a three open a little bit and they got to sink in. And that's when the shooters knock it down. What grade would you give Kyrie on the, uh, the lob? Grade? <laughs> yeah. I like you talking about like one through ten. Yeah, like a dunk contest judge. Uh, You're qualified. I give him 50. <laughs> <laughs> I give him 50 for sure. Describe that play, Derek, when Luca Dove and McCourt threw it over his shoulders, Kyrie, and then Kyrie lobs up to you and you dunk. Uh, I mean, great hustle play by Luca, getting on the floor, uh, putting his body on the line to get the ball, get another play for us. And, I mean, Kai, I told Kai in the beginning of the season, Whenever he's on a fast break, I'm, I'm trailing him all the time. And either you go lay the ball up and you make your layup, or if you miss, I'm right there to follow you up. Or you throw the ball up in the air and I go get it. So, I mean, we already got that connection going on. So, I mean, it's all good. Derek, the month of March has been one of your better shooting months, but also you've been getting to the rack a bunch more. How much does you attacking closeouts and getting to the rim add to your offensive game? A lot. I mean, if they, they're going to run at me and, and, and let me just draw the ball, then I'm not going to turn it down. I'm gonna get to the line, make my layups, make my free throws. But they don't close up when I shoot the ball. Like, like I've been saying all season, it's a simple game. And I just keep it simple for me. 18 dunks is like a decades long record. How do you feel having the chemistry click on all cylinders like that? Uh, good. I mean, we just got to keep it going like that. I mean, how many ever games we got left, we just got to keep it going and, and, and finish out strong. And we all know we're fighting for it, so we got to keep going for it. You know you guys moved into sixth place tonight, right? You said what? You moved into sixth place in the Western Conference. You got to keep it and try to, get, try to get down to five, try to get down to four. And that's, that's my mindset. My mindset is always trying to get you know, one up, you know, get better every day. And this is what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think just the penetration of just talking about, you know, the ball touching the paint. Something that we've been, you know, talking from, you know, training camp and I thought guys were able to find, you know, each other, um, being very unselfish uh, tonight and uh, the bigs took advantage of that, um, including our stretch four. Kai um, and put the lob. So um, just understanding that again, making the extra pass tonight. I thought it was Timmy turned down a, a three to get you know someone else, Maxi, a corner three. He turns that down and drives it and tries to find a guy, a, a teammate. Um, so a lot of great things tonight that we can build on. Uh, our defense again was uh, was really good. Jason, you guys going back to the summer really made a priority to add athleticism. Around with Kyrie, obviously again at the trade deadline. How do you think the athleticism has, has changed 
I don't know if personality of the team is the right way to put it, but you know, it just kind of changes team dynamic. Yeah, I think when you look at um, just the past teams, that, you know, we weren't super athletic. We weren't going to win the dunk contest in the warm-up line. So um, I think now we can compete uh, in the lay layup line. Um, we can also do trick shots in the layup line. Um, we don't have to use our hands. We can use our feet. Um, but when you look at um, Gafford and D Live, um, even Omax, uh, we, we got you know athletic, quick uh, in the summer, and then in the trade deadline we added Gaff and PJ got um, even better. Um, and then understanding the the character of the guys are great. That locker room is uh, incredible. They all cheer for one another. You can see that um, at the end of the game when Hardy had the ball, he got it to AJ. He's cheering for him to score. And that's, that's the chemistry and the trust and uh, building a team, you know, as the season goes on. So we're, we're athletic, yes, but also we're, we're a team that enjoys playing with one another. Coach, it's funny, we talked about, you know, point guards earlier. Then Gafford goes out and kind of steals the show in the paint. Uh, just kind of assess his performance tonight. Yeah, it was like one of those Wilt nights, 10 4 11. I'm trying to figure out which shot he missed. I don't know which one they, they credited him <laughs> for a miss. That's tough at home. Um, but I, I think, uh, again, that's what he brings. Uh, the quarterbacks love finding him. He has great hands. His, uh, his ability to finish in traffic uh, is something that we haven't had. And so, um, again, I think he's back on uh, that streak of <laughs> and finishing, but just dominating the paint on both ends. I thought we did a really good job of rebounding the ball, uh, not giving them second or third opportunities tonight. Uh, you talked about Tim like passing up a three to pass to his teammate. How much was the emphasis of that to get that high percentage shot? Yeah, we're always trying to get the best shot. Um, and when you look at, uh, Timmy could have easily shot that and no one would have said anything because we all trust Timmy uh, when he has the ball and getting the look that Timmy had, he was wide open, he turned it down. And I just think that as we go forward here when games become even more important and possessions become better, you know, looked upon, we got we got to be able to pass up one to get a better one. And I thought you saw that tonight, but you've seen that here in the last couple of weeks. Guys are being very unselfish, uh, and it's, it's really fun to watch and to be a part of. How reminiscent of it uh, is it of, like, when you played, like, with Vince Carter or somebody else who could get to the ring? Yeah, you know, when you have uh, talent, it's, uh, you know, it's always easy to say that you're supposed to win, but you have to put the talent together, and it has to trust one another. You can see that in a season, um, sometimes we want it to happen overnight, but as it's March and we're playing on both sides of the ball. We're not shooting the three as well as we would like, but we're still getting wide open looks. Guys are still taking them. Um, but it's just, I, I guess, that, you know, everybody's trust chemistry we built now it's about being tested and we got a great road you know trip ahead to be tested and we'll see how that how we respond but um, a lot of good things again tonight um, Hardy I thought played incredible for us off the bench and yes he should get more minutes but there's only 48 minutes and there's a couple guys in front so um, I would like the public to be patient um, his teammates all know that he can play and that again I think he's been great uh, in the time that he's playing, and you never know with the injuries, uh, you got to be ready. He, he's been ready, so. Um, but I, again, the team is playing at a high level before we go out on this road trip. Describe that play when Luca though at midcourt threw the ball over his over his shoulder, Kyrie got it and lobbed it up. But no. Yeah, the uh, Luca I think is showing how important his possession is defensively. He's getting steals. He had four steals. Uh, to be able to get on the floor this time of the year, uh, it just shows how much he cares. Um, again, your leaders have to demonstrate by uh, doing the little things and for him to get on the floor. Uh, and then to be able to come up and, you know, he's strong enough to throw the uh, over-the-shoulder pass to Kai, and then Kai throws a lob. Um, again, just the unselfishness, as Tim brought up, uh, being athletic. Um, we can do different things now. We just don't have to shoot layups or get tricky with the layup. We can now, uh, we can dunk. Coach Kidd, it looked like PJ kind of got banged up at the end of the game. Do you have an update on what happened there? Yeah, I, I think he stepped on someone's foot, um, but there's no update. We'll, we'll have an update for you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it.